And that's another thing that the Facebook and YouTube, it allows people that access to us. It's easier to send all in a message or, you know, anybody a message than like go to the Mexico Movement office that we had before, right, in East LA. And so I think it allows for that. And obviously that comes with the cons, right, where just anybody could just message you that you really don't want to uh, hear from or a tax or whatever. But that comes with it, right? That comes with that exposure and it comes with that terrain of online um, organizing. And so with that, we want to open this up to the, our next session, which is questions to Oli. And like I've said, you know, this is the work that he's done, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, well, you guys read white man books and, you know, we're not going to follow what you're saying. I'm going to listen to my elder from the reservation. And I'm like, okay, who's your elder? Or Miguel Sanchez, or there, I'm like, okay, I go, he's your elder, he has a Spanish name, um, he uses a cross, you know, all these things, so it's like, you know, all these age, you know, because of their, their stereotypical view of what an elder is, you know, they come over here and they disrespect Oli, they disrespect him, oh, oh man, sorry, and, um, and it's hard because you, you, he has taken so much, you know, these attacks through the years. And we as, as an organization, we're like, you're not alone. You know, there's going to be, a, if they're afraid of only and they're afraid of what he has done for the last 40 years, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself because we in the Mexica movement and the people that are here, we are continuing that legacy. And we will make damn sure well that our lives and our kids' lives, we're going to continue the resistance of the Mexica movement. And that's why it is important for us to give credit, to give respect that we have, you know, if there's something wrong with our people that they learn from the organization, they don't give credit. You know, they've learned, and um, Nadella just mentioned the t-shirt knockoffs, you know, he didn't mention the concept knockoffs. People taking stuff that only wrote in the 90s, posting it on their website and saying that it's theirs. You know, the, the utmost disrespect that we have among ourselves. You know, not being able to acknowledge, not being able to give credit to a warrior, to a hero of our people. And that's something that, you know, that we confront a lot of times in the organization. So it's important for us to give thanks, it's important for us to acknowledge. And it's not that, oh, you know, just because Oli doesn't come out with, uh, with sage, burning sage, and, you know, speaking like this, and I am Oli, and he doesn't follow that bullshit. Because he's not a Hollywood Indian character. You know, he has developed a teaching technique, he has developed a decolonization approach to our people that's accessible, that's clear, that's not caught up in academia, and it's a way that all of us can understand. doesn't matter how, what educational background you have. And that's the importance. The importance is, is to get this message and make it clear for our people. Get this message and make it easy to understand. We don't want to get caught up in sounding academic or, you know, like becoming elitist within what we know. It's the more you know, the more responsible you are to teach it. Because just like Olin always tells you, you know, we, he didn't know this, we didn't know this. So what happens is that you make a decision. You make a decision to change. You make a decision to challenge yourself. Because before you go out there and confront the bendido or confront your, your neighbor or confront the racist teacher, we got to confront ourselves. And I think that's one of the biggest aspects of the organization is that Olin has taught us as warriors that we start with ourselves. And that's huge because we meet a lot of people that they don't have that, that approach to lessons of, of decolonization. And that's vital for, for our organization and that's why we've been along, around for so long. Because we take those challenges and it's been hard and it's been critical, but ultimately it's the most important thing we have to do. So, and like we're in the organization, we've met tons of organizations, you know, we met them in 1999, and next thing you know, they're Latinos now. We met some so-called hardcore, you know, Mexica, danzantes, and now they're Latinos dancing for who knows what Latino museum. So it's, it's the consistency, it's the consistency of our actions and the consistency of our evolution that has uh, led us for us to be here today. And so with that, I, I went on a little too long, but uh, we're going to open it to questions to Oli and I know I only have three here, but uh, we'll, we'll answer these first, and then depending if we have more time and how we um, feels about you know whatever the questions are, we can uh, take questions from the actual audience here. Okay, so one moment. Okay, so we have. Well, this one has three questions. <laughs> Forty-three, 
question says, are you reaching and educating religious organizations? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is a, a topic that's come up uh, over the years, and I'm a product of all Catholic schools, so it took me a while to recover from all that. Uh, and for the longest time, I think really only within, I think the last six, seven years, uh, we've been confronting Christianity. Because um, I used to have the idea, well, if you had confronted me when I was 14 or 15 years old, attacking the church, I wouldn't listen to anything you were saying. And I would defend the church. And, uh, but then I realized, well, and then I kept reading, and I, I, was, uh, I was a very fanatical Catholic. Most of it, in that I actually read the materials, I read the Bible, I read all, because I wanted to know. I wanted to know, but the more, I, the more I read, the more disgusted I got. And the more eventually I said, this is all a fraud. Um, so doing outreach uh, to uh, churches, the problem is, uh, Public, we don't have uh, 5,000 people here, okay, listening to this. Uh, we don't even you know, have $500 <laughs> to our budget. <laughs> yeah, we have to be very selective about where we go. That, that's part of it. Um, but keep in mind, in the 80s and the 90s, we did all this. Actually, we used to go into the schools. Why don't you guys go into the schools? Because we found that it was mostly ineffective. Uh, although she died, I met her actually uh, at one of the, at a high. She was in high school, and and we were trying to develop a, a club uh, there at the high school. To a certain extent, we were successful, but we also realized, you know, they're teenagers. They're we were all teenagers, you know, and most are, are not really ready. You know, uh, it's, let's see, I'm maybe the only teenager that basically survived with us. Um, yeah, and uh, so we have to be very selective. So we don't really want to go into uh, a religious school and talk about this because it's just going to be resistance. We'd rather go, uh, instead of going, which, which I did also in, in, the, in the 80s and 90s, to these big um, college things where they would gather uh, kids from different high schools and give the the college approach, and, and then they get to find out about their culture and all this. The majority of the kids were there because they were forced to be there. And I learned after a while, it's never worth it to go to an audience that is forced to be there. I'd rather have a small group of people who are interested, and I'll take the time, instead of going to you know 20,000 people and hope that maybe five people there are actually interested. So, I don't know if this is quite answering the, the, the question, but uh, just at the point where you got to be very selective, and I'm getting older, so I'm get more selective of what I do with my time, and same thing with uh, the rest of you. I mean, I was surprised about the, these uh, two young people in London. You know, I said, well, how did you, you two even find each other? You know, it was a series of very strange things. So, the thing is, we see it's more important really for us to do more YouTubes. This is turning into a YouTube. And so hopefully educate people. So, yeah, uh, I really wouldn't spend my time and I wouldn't encourage anybody to go into a religious organization or a school because they're not really going to be open and they're going to be very skeptical. I'd rather go, you know, three people somewhere and they're interested and they want more clarity. I, I, we've done this. We've gone, gone out and for people who are like the, the people in London, I spent hours with them, Skype, email. Uh, meanwhile, they've done protests, they've developed videos, they've done uh, this whole, you should see some of the videos that they did with the lectures. So it, it's about being selective. If we had like you know, maybe 2,000 members and, and you know 200 uh, lecturers, I'd say, okay, we can. The new ones can go out there and they can learn the lesson. So I hope I answered the question. Okay, the next question is How is the Chicano movement related to the Mexican movement? Uh, I call myself a Chicano most of my adult life. Um, uh, for those of you who are young, the, the word Latino and Hispanic didn't really exist at one point. They didn't come 
about into the 80s. So the, 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 the big issue in the 60s was, I, uh, I don't want to be called Mexican American. Um, but we had a lot of our people, instead of saying Hispanic Latino, they would say, well, I'm not Mexican, I'm Spanish. Now, you don't even hear that anymore. But that, that was what our people used to say. Um, and um, so, yeah, I was actually here in this park uh, for the Chicano Moratorium and actually some other protests at East L.A. College. A whole bunch of different things that took place. Uh, and, and I operated as a Chicano. But as I started to look into more and read more of the materials, I said, this is a mestizo movement. It, it celebrates uh, the, and that's what I, I, I was raised as a mestizo, in a mestizo mentality. Um, and for, that's kind of what actually took me so long to, to realize what the problem we had. Uh, and I'm sure you've all had it in your families, uh, all the, these ideas of the mestizo. Why that's the best thing. A real Mexican, the, the full blood of Mexican is a mestizo. And things like, like that. Um, but at one point I realized that part of the problem was the Chicano mentality and Chicano studies, which are now Latino studies. What has come out of Chicano studies? Nothing, actually. Um, when you go through our materials, we don't talk about the Mexican Revolution. We don't talk about the Mexican-American War. We don't talk about the War of Independence. We don't talk about the Chicano Movement, because none of that is going to help us to be clear about that 99% of our history, which happened before 1492. We're not going to be clear about our identity as a Nica Flaca people. We're already confused with this whole well, yeah, my, my family's dark and some are light and blah, blah, blah. We get all caught up in this whole mestizo mentality, which is kind of, um, Chicano basically led to Latino and Hispanic. That, that's why I got off the bus. <laughs> I said, I'm not taking this bus anymore. Because there really, there are no Chicanos. You hear people say, I'm Chicano and all this, but in reality, they're only Chicano when it's convenient. It's like a, a, a jacket you wear, you know, like your high school jacket, you know, when you go to a, a reunion or something. Yeah, but they don't, I don't know anybody who's living as a Chicano. Uh, they, may, they may call themselves Chicanos, but they're, they're not. So how did it uh, bring about the machine movement? I, I think part of it is the finding out that it was a dead end. And we had to create something else because we knew, like I said, that bus is taking us off a cliff. Yeah. And uh, that was like we were mentioning about uh, Joe Sanchez. We were getting very emotional uh, about uh, Joe. Um, and part of the thing that he told me one day, he said, you know, I'm not a Mexican-American. I'm not a Chicano. He says, I'm just a Mexican. I'm a, I'm a Mexican from, from New Mexico. <laughs> and that's it, you know. Um, and that was kind of, we had a lot of discussions, and part of it led to creating the Mexica movement. So in a way, it's kind of like, you know, from being Mexicano to being Chicano, eventually to becoming Mexica as, as far as what, what, what I guess, what, what was the spark to all of this. And then we're, and we evolved from that also in, into uh, the, using Nica Tlaca as uh, all of us as indigenous people of this whole continent. So if you read the handbook, uh, there's lots of things I would edit now. This 1995, I've learned a lot more over the years. I, I, made, I made mistakes as I went along. Like the Chinese say, uh, he who does nothing makes no mistakes. He who does a lot of work will make a lot of mistakes. And we make mistakes. Um, but it's been a, through those mistakes we improve the situation. Okay, why were people bothered by Mexica? It was too intellectual a concept, and we realized, because they're all thinking, oh, well, uh, I'm not Mexica blood, I'm not Mexica. Well, I'm not Mexica blood either. 
Uh, my, my heritage has nothing to do with Nahuatl speakers, has nothing to do with the Mexica or Tenochtitlan. But for me, it was very clear intellectually, and it, it was a, a great idea. Reading daily life of the Aztecs, said, wow, the, we had cities, we had education systems, we had all these accomplishments. This is something that all of us as, as indigenous people, as Nika Flaca, can embrace. And so that's kind of like the, the path. And yeah, the, the, one of the bumps was Chicano. But like I said, I at one point where I realized that it was a dead end, that it was a bus going off a cliff. You know, but there was something to learn in that what, what was the Chicano movement. Uh, there's a lot of fraud about what started. It was about the Vietnam War. Uh, that's, that's what got us all angry. See, like right now, um, Mexico, they got the whole thing about the, the petroleum is being sold, and they don't care. Yeah, it's being robbed from people in Mexico. <laughs> Nobody's really protesting. A <coughs> yeah. whole, whole bunch of horrible things. Unless it gets very personal, then people get involved. So, yes, uh, Chicano uh, movement did influence eventually where, where we are right now with the Chica movement, in that we learned that that's how you don't do it. Okay, and the next question says, how do I liberate myself and protect my family's respect despite our differences? Read that one more time. How do I liberate myself and protect my family's respect despite our differences? Okay, I, I take it you're talking about uh, uh, you, you've learned that you're trying to teach your family and they resist. Um, that was my problem. Uh, 30 years ago, and I kept on trying to educate. I figured my own family, that's where you, you start. And you know, that's your, your friends, right? You know, uh, and you, you know, the mistake of teaching people that you work with. You know? um, in the end, like with my brother, I tried. You know, and uh, total resistance, total resistance. And, but then he didn't want to read anything, um, and at one point he became a Republican. That's why I pushed eject. I'm, I'm out of this conversation. Um, and again, like I said earlier about the the religious schools, you got to be selective with your time. I know I know some of we've had ex members that that got caught up uh, with either family members or spouses. And, or uh, kids they grew up with, uh, and now they're adults, and and they were all bad influences on them. And but they kept on trying and kept on trying. And then at one point they gave up. And then what ended up happening is they were having an influence on them. Uh, for those of them, uh, I forgot, uh, uh, they got, uh, uh, I think the English word. They got they got burned out, burned out, demoralized from just trying and trying and trying. And, and um, mostly what I, I, I say, I, I know they're, they're your family. Um, and at one, time, at one point, you have to be realistic. You have, you have to be realistic. And, and if you find someone in your family who at least is willing to learn, spend the time with them. You know? But if all they do is fight with you and argue with you, uh, I had one relative uh, now with LAPD and detective and all this, Mr. Hispanic, and I kept on trying to explain it to him and explain it to him. And I got to a point where I, family reunions, and I knew he was going to be there, you know, I said, oh, I got other things to do. Because he, he, he would love just to get into a fight. But eventually he became a Republican too. Isn't it sad? It's like finding Jewish Nazis. <laughs> how, how our people end up uh, becoming Republicans. So I would say you have to be realistic. You have to be realistic about your, your family members because it's kind of like when my, my mom and dad, when they were alive, uh, with my dad, uh, it was great because he, he's the big influence in my life. With my dad, and I wouldn't be doing any of this. But my mom, on the other hand, man, just at one point I learned, you know, just don't talk to them about it. <laughs> And, but, you know, you only get one mom and one dad, right? So those are the ones you should, unless, you know, they, they try to kill you 
one day, or you know, that's you know, cut it off for your relationship with mom and dad. With mom and dad, you only get one, one set, and just don't talk about it. You know, don't, don't get into arguments with them. The next question is, what's your point of view on folklorico and Aztec dance? Followed up with, what about our chero music? Is it colonized? Does it have a European background? All right, on the folklorico, overall, I don't have a problem with folklorico, right? even if they're doing Aztec dances, because it's being presented as theater. It says, this is the way we think it was, you know? And um, folklorico, I just wish they would put more of the history into it. They would uh, try to encourage our people a little bit more with folklorico. That's one thing. Uh, so I just see more like an improvement that needs to be made. Uh, so much so much could be done with folklorico, but it's more about the dancing and the music and the beautiful costumes. And then you go home, get one of those dollars, and then that's it. Yeah. Which is a, a general statement for me, kind of what's going on with music. Oh yeah, we went to a, a jazz festival for six hours of, of jazz and, and then what else could you have done with six hours of your life? But then most of our people spend how much time listening to music every day? They wake up to music, they music in the shower, music on the way to work, music on their breaks at work, on the way home. And what is the music actually doing? And uh, the danzantes. Can I delete questions? <laughs> No, the Dansantes, when I, when I first ran across the Dansantes in the 80s, I was so proud. I said, wow, somebody's actually doing something. Um, what I didn't know at the time was how inaccurate everything they were doing was. But I was just glad to see some, somebody doing something like that. And But then as I, I learned more, and over the years I realized that it was wrong for Aztec to be used as a word, uh, for, for Aztec dancers to be dancing with a, the, the, the cross of Christ in, in a sacred uh, Aztec ritual, uh, or being in there dancing with bleach blonde hair, and then the, the dancers afterwards talking about, yeah, that's the way we Latinos are, you know, so like, what, what's wrong with this picture? Um, and having dealt with Don Santos over the years, I haven't really seen anything really positive coming out uh, because Don Santos attack us as an organization uh, again and again and again. Because uh, mostly what, what Don Santos do, do is new age stuff. Uh, they promote new age materials. Um, they talk about sacred dances, but then they go to the Third Street Promenade over there where they, they have all the tourists and they're there basically to make money. So if it's a sacred dance, why, why are you collecting money for it? Why are you doing it for white people? Yeah. Um, well, they're doing it because they're exhibitionists. I look, at my, look at my legs, look at my body, don't I dance cute or whatever. That's more what I've, I've encountered. Uh, so it hasn't been really uh, a pleasant experience to see, you know, the, the fruit of the Lanzantes, because when you look at it, what, what actually comes out of it? So that, that's been my uh, experience with them. On the next part is, what about Arcero music? Oh. Is it colonized? Does it have a European background? Okay. I, I, I got a ton of ranchero music and Norteño music and Tex-Mex -Tex music and all that uh, from years ago, you know. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of feel-good music and all that. Um, but somewhere in there, the, the Naco Corridos came in there. Somewhere in there, uh, all of these, like, going over my brothers and listening to some, some of this music where they're going on my, that I, I want to I grow up and marry a uh, blonde uh, white woman 
and she's going to have, we're going to have little white kids, and blah, 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 and I want to, and I want to, I want to have a Rolls Royce, and I want to, I mean, I've heard songs equivalent to that, you know, um, so part of it is about feeling good, listening to the music, but then it, it's more like escapism. I just wish there was something more positive that came out of the music, so you can enjoy music, and it, and, and it, it has you thinking about something that adds to you know the, the dignity of our people, that, that says something, get up and go out and protest, let's make some changes, let's get this, these traitors and these cowards, let's do, do something. But have you ever heard any, any music that goes to that effect? It doesn't happen. So whether it's uh, Tex-Mex or Norteño or Mariachi or stuff like that, uh, which I've listened to all, all my life, you know, uh, it didn't contribute. Other music I had, and, you know, and un rincón de una cantina, you know. It's like all these basically drug songs, you know, and about love, you know. Uh, and uh, again, uh, it's kind of romanticizing the drunk. It's romanticizing bad relations. It's a whole bunch of different things. I, I know we, we've all been romantic and in love and all that, but uh, I think it's it's time to maybe even you know, a whole new music needs to be created. A whole new music that on the one hand uh, has you thinking about things and that initiates action that changes your life, uh, that helps educate other people that motivates other people. And at the same time, you're it, it somehow, something in the rhythm of the music, yeah, that's right, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna change my life, I'm gonna confront that guy in the mirror, I'm gonna go out and do this, I'm gonna go out and do that, and variations on, on music. So that's not specifically about ranchetas, but I don't know if there was a specific issue about ranchetas themselves, but. Asking, does it have a European background? Practically all. Not practically. Well, unless you're, you're, you're being really authentic on Nigan on Flaca music. Uh, uh, but it's all, it's like I grew up in uh, the, the Texas area. That's what well, my, my family and So a lot of that is Tex Mex uh, music, Norteñas, you know. But where's your accordion from? <laughs> I had never even thought about that. It's a German influence. The whole, the whole. Music is German influence. Yeah, and the same thing, you know, like well, why 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 do we have beer? Okay, that's a, again a German influence. Germans who went into Mexico at one point. Um, so yeah, it is it is very uh, very European in every way, actually. Uh, mariachi, think about it. None of, none of the instruments in, in mariachi are Nigan Flaca instruments. The, even the, the way the mariachi dresses, it's basically the, the, the Spanish hidalgo with a little bit of the, the engraving, you know, here and, the, and that big hat, uh, which we have, the, we have the, are you guys aware we have the biggest hat in the world of anybody? And why do we have to have such a big hat? Make sure you don't get too dark out in the sun. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of different things that we haven't been taught, we don't think about. Uh, but it's all pretty much European influences in our lives, and they are all ways of destroying us and keeping us from looking at our own music, looking at our own roots, our own identity, our own history. All of it in its own little way is kind of like little, little knives you know, that are destroying us. Okay, and the last written question says, what upcoming projects are in the works for the Mexico movement? Well, immediately we have the anti-Columbus protest, October 12th. Okay, so hopefully you all can come and join us. Uh, it's a Sunday. Hopefully uh, none of you are working on Sunday. Uh, and we're going to be down at Placito Vera. We have actually, we have some flyers for that. Uh, and we're going to go starting out at the Placito Vera where they have this Spanish uh, priest uh, statue 
We represent the missions, which ended up killing 95% of the population in California in each of those, those missions. And then we're going to go from there to the cathedral, where they built this $140 million cathedral over Tongva burial site. But then think about $143 million. We could have had a really great cultural center there for our people. But that's such an ugly building uh, on top of it for $140-something million. And then from there, we're going to the, the Columbus statue. And then we're going to head back to, to uh, uh, Alameda. And we're going to do more protests there. So that's one event. November, I think, 15th? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's going to be a lecture at East Los Angeles College in November, some date. We're, 15, we're, I think. Yeah, we're working on the date. So that for October, November, and Inanna, that's a point in September. Okay, all right. Uh, so those are two events coming up on uh, October and November. And these are things for you to, to come in and support and get involved. Um, and uh, of course, we'll be planning some more things for next year also. And uh, today, uh, it's you know, to commemorate 20 years of all of this work. Um, and uh, we wanted to be able to share this again through YouTube um, so that people know what is the history of the Michigan Movement. And, uh, also, we have events coming up, you know, one is a protest and one is a lecture, so we're, we're, we're not just, you know, talking about what we did, it's something that's ongoing and what's ongoing on, on the internet also. Uh, how many power do we have? Okay, anybody have any other questions? Yeah. First of all, I want to congratulate you on 20 years. It's fantastic. I'm becoming more aware through my wife and watching you and Sidlali and a couple other people that were here when you guys do your protests and you get a lot of people that are just anti and they get, I was just going to say, you've got a lot of nerve, a lot of courage and I respect that of all of you because you don't back down. With you and this movement here, I feel like, you know, I have a chance to at least belong somewhere. Because I've been in the middle. I mean, I've been in the middle looking. When she's turned me on to a lot of the things that she has been doing, I say this with a great deal of respect that I do want something to anchor my new child. And that's why we named her Bolsero. Bolsero. And for us, now I'm here to back my wife, I'm here to back this movement up, and I want to belong to this because I feel like this is a big part of me, and I want to actually get a seat up where I'm west going, and I want to go to those protests and stuff. I don't want to take camp because I don't want, I've seen them pepper spray some of the kids, and that's one thing that I'm not going to allow for him, maybe some of you watching. I don't mind yeah. the pepper spray, but I don't mind yeah, no, the, the, like the, the anti-Columbus one. Uh, we had actually some, some kids on that, yeah. and, and, and that's not that's not really confrontational. Right. When it gets into dealing to go confront the Minutemen, obviously we don't want kids right. uh, in, in those kind of situations. Uh, um, but uh, you know, obviously not to a lecture. It's not a problem right. to that kind of stuff. Uh, um, but the, I think the, the, the main thing I would say is for you to strengthen yourself with, with the reading of it, so you teach it to your children, and obviously your wife has uh, uh, initiated a lot of this uh, in going, uh, going to the, the protest with us, and uh, we all started out not knowing, you know? We all started learning little by little, uh, and some of us it takes us longer because of personal circumstances or whatever. I know we've had members uh, that, that have a hard time reading because they weren't used to reading and they actually had a, a, a problem reading a book. Uh, that'll hold you back. That's why we do actually so many videos on there because I, I know a lot of people are not going to read the books. I know they're not going to read the books and that's why we we have so many videos on there, you got, you got hours of video to watch. And uh, now our uh, only thing is might confuse some of the people listening to our, our 
chapter in London, what, what's with these little British accents, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 but that is, I, I'm honest, that, to see that has just really, that's encouraged me, and it's really made me feel like, wow. Yeah. 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 Psychologically, yeah. It, it is something. Actually, the fact that they're in London, is yeah. like, how, how, did, how did that happen? I definitely, we can't get people out of East L.A. I, I think that uh, of the members, I think that Yoder and I are the only ones who came out of East L.A. And we, we thought, uh, man, we're East L.A., you know, this is where we're going to get the membership. And we got people coming in from Riverside, we got people coming from San Diego, we got people uh, up in, uh, what is Seattle, and San, San Francisco, and all uh, scattered on it. Utah, yes, Utah, <laughs> Utah, and uh, uh, obviously we have lots of people actually out in Arizona too, uh, and, uh, and that's why right now I'd rather do more YouTubes than go to a school or even a high school uh, because it, the, the amount of time invested and the, the, the possibility of something actually coming out of it is pretty slim, but doing the, the YouTubes, that, that's something 24-7. People can go on there when they feel like it, and I'm going to listen to that now, because I'm in the right mood, you know. So, so if, if the YouTubes help educate you, they help educate your child, um, and uh, how old is your, your, your son? Yes, sir, too. Two, two, uh, Give them 20 more years of, of, your, of your, your, uh, your efforts to educate him and at the same time educate yourself. Because you can't teach what, what you don't know, right? Yeah. Okay. So you, you, you educate yourselves and then that should be a motivation for, for well, for you, for you to, to say, you know, I'm going to do my best job at the educating through that. My son, by the time he's 20 years old, he's going to be using the full intelligence that, that our Creator gave him, and he's going to be out there uh, ed educating other people on what he's learned. And if we can have that in, in, the, in the millions of our people throughout our continent, wouldn't that be a beautiful thing? Because we're going to be the majority out here in the Western United States in, in 20 years. In 50 years, we're going to be the majority in the U.S. Yeah, so what good does it do is to have the numbers if we're we're speaking like Obama, you know, when our, our forefathers came here, and I'm just a mutt, you know, and so like, yeah. So we, we have to, uh, uh, actually, we have to change, because we have another segment here. But thank you very much.